Welcome on this glorious second Sunday of Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. Um, this is a, a big day for us. First of all, th this morning, our friend Richard McCarran will be uh, welcomed into full communion in the Catholic Church, and he will receive his first communion. So that's a good thing for, for all of us and for Richard. Um, we'll have a, a baptism later this morning at the 11 o'clock Mass. Uh, Michael Gamello, little 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 person, uh, will be baptized. Um, this afternoon, we'll be celebrating Divine Mercy Sunday with uh, an hour of exposition and adoration, and then um, the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Um, yesterday, last evening at Mass, we blessed our statues that were put in <clears throat> right at Easter, um, and they are on pedestals that were built by our parishioner, Roger Branson. They're beautiful, the wood pedestals. If you get a chance, go up there and look at them. So we thank Roger for that kind donation of his wonderful talent. Um, so now we have uh, our Blessed Mother and St. Joseph, our patron, with us every day at Mass. So that is a, a beautiful addition to our parish. Um, and those came here before me. So um, whoever helped get those, thank you if you're one of those people. Um, so with all that said, now we can uh, quiet ourselves and enter into a spirit of prayer so that we can join in the holy sacrifice of the Mass.
Good morning and welcome. Happy Easter. Please be sure to silence any electronic devices so not to disrupt our liturgy today. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, also called Sunday of Divine Mercy. Today our readings tell us Thomas believed because he saw the risen Jesus. Although we have never seen him, we believe that Jesus is the Christ, begotten by God. We give thanks to the Lord because he has formed us into a community of believers, united in the spirit. Please join in singing, Jesus is risen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we continue our celebration of Easter, we remember our baptism the day that we became members of the body of Christ and entered into the death and resurrection of our Lord. So let us pray. Lord God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaim the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters 
who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Thanks for your 
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life 
in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thinking about starting a, a new club here, and it's going to be called the Defenders of St. Thomas. And, you know, Thomas has this reputation, you know, it's like when we talk about Judas, we talk about a betrayer. And, you know, whenever we talk about somebody betraying somebody, oh, they're, they're a Judas. And then, but with Thomas, we have doubting Thomas. And, you know, it's as if Thomas did not believe. And to some degree, that's true. It's, it's not that he didn't believe in Christ and, and he wouldn't have believed in his resurrection. It's just that he didn't believe the testimony of the people who told him that they had seen the Lord. You know, Thomas, for whatever reason, wasn't with the other disciples when the Lord first appeared. But we have to look at um, all the Gospels and look and see how nobody believed anybody. You know, Mary Magdalene came out and said, I saw the Lord and nobody believed her. And then, you know, the two people that uh, were on the road to Emmaus, they came back and in Mark's gospel, nobody believed them. And everybody was doubting everybody else. And it was only by their seeing Jesus in person, alive, risen, and glorified, that they were able to say, we have seen the Lord. And so, you know, Thomas is just doing what everybody else did and probably what everybody else would do today. You know, if, if I came running in here from outside and I said, hey, everybody, the risen Lord is outside, you would have said, All right, right, Father George, yes, we, sure he is. I'm sure some people would get up and run out and see, but I think a, a lot of them, a lot of you would say, sure, Father, yeah, been smoking a little something last night, maybe. <laughs> um, so I don't smoke, by the way. So Thomas is, you know, he's basically a human being, you know, surprise there. And human beings learn about the world, they learn about reality through their senses. You know, we all, we learn who we are and where we are and what everything is by our sight, our hearing, our taste, our touch, our, our smell, our, you know, everything, every, all these uh, senses, the five senses that we have, those are kind of like our receivers of reality. And then we run them through our brains and we can, you know, come to some idea of what's going on around us. And so everybody, you know, needed to see Jesus. And we see in the gospel today that Jesus appeared to them and he's, you know, they're all afraid and they're, you know, they're cowering in this room because they think they're going to, you know, they're going to end up like Jesus did, crucified. And Jesus comes in and brings them peace. Within all their terror and their, and their nervousness and their, you know, just freaking out, Jesus comes in and says, peace be with you. And then he shows them his hands and his side. He shows it to them and then repeats himself, peace be with you. So they know that he's there. And then he gives them the first mission, the very first mission that Jesus gives his disciples after his resurrection, he breathes on them, gives them that breath of the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. And so we can talk about that in two different ways. One is, you know, he's talking to his disciples or to the apostles, and he is giving them the power and the authority to forgive sins in his name. So if, if somebody comes back here in the chapel to the reconciliation room to receive absolution for their sins, that authority has been given to me by my bishop who got it from his bishop, who got it from his bishop, who got it from his bishop, all the way back to Jesus. The other sense in which Jesus says whose sins you forgive are forgiven is each and every one of us. He gives us the power to forgive the sins of others that have been committed against us or to those who are close to us and that's what he wants us to do he wants us to forgive in his name 
And so we are given the, the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can rise above any anger or resentment or hurt and forgive other people. So the disciples saw Jesus, they received a mission. And then our friend Thomas comes in. And he says, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. So he wants proof. You know, he's, you know, he's from Missouri, the show me state. He wants to be shown. And so he receives what he asked for. Jesus gives him, put your finger here and see my hands. Bring your hand and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. So Jesus gives him that sense experience of his risen body. But then he, he calls Thomas and all of us a further step. And that further step is, blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. And that is Jesus taking all of his believers, all his followers, his disciples, into the next step because he's going to be ascended into heaven in, in 40 days and after that nobody is going to see Jesus in person until he returns again in glory at the end of time except for you know some saints who had a vision of Jesus but that's that's another story but the you know the the, the experience of the risen Lord the glorified Lord will not come again to us until the time of his return in glory until then, we have faith. And in some senses, the, uh, the, the ability to see and experience Jesus through the eyes of faith are greater than the experience of seeing Jesus in person. Because when we see something in person, they're right there. They're right in front of us. They're in time and space. And, you know, they, they can't be anywhere else. You know, and, and so we have them kind of nailed down into this one moment. But if we see with the eyes of faith, which Jesus calls us to see, that opens a whole new way of seeing him. And it releases our experience of Jesus from the bounds of time and space. You know, you and I, not only are we sensory creatures, we are temporal spatial creatures. And the only thing we can deal with is what's right in front of us. And Jesus is inviting us to see a whole universe filled with his glory. And he's inviting us to see all the possibilities of what belief in him can bring us. And as St. Paul tells us in our second reading today from the letter to, uh, or no, that's St. John, excuse me. Um, we become, through that faith, we become victors over the world. By our belief, we overcome everything that might stand in our way. So, you know, we're all going to be Thomas. We're all going to want to see things. And Jesus is calling us to look beyond that. But, you know, there's another way of seeing that does require faith. And this is what's important for us. We see Jesus sacramentally. We don't see him in person. We don't see his physical body. But we see the sacraments, the church, everything that he left behind for us to see him with. So we see him, you know, right here as we hear the word of, of, of Jesus proclaimed in the Gospels. That is one way that we experience his presence. We have the Eucharist there where Jesus breaks the bread for us. And just like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, we experience his presence in the breaking of the bread. We experience his presence when a little person today is going to be baptized. We experience his presence in this gathered body right here. You know, this is the body of Christ right here. And his presence is also available today in our brother Richard, who is joining this body of Christ, who's coming into full communion with us. And he'll receive the Lord at the altar. The Paschal candle, the light of Christ. So we have all different ways of seeing the Lord that aren't just with these two eyes. We see him with our hearts, we see him with our minds, we see him with all our senses and even beyond our senses. And we become like Thomas. When we are able to see the Lord 
in a way more than physical, we can say with Thomas, my Lord and my God. You know, those are the, the words that every Christian should say when they have that experience of seeing or, ex or hearing or experiencing the Lord. My Lord and my God. You know, the fact that we're gathered here on Sunday and that we continue to gather every Sunday as we've had for 2,000 years, that is an occasion to say, my Lord and my God, look, here you are in your risen glory in this, this body of people. So, you know, a lot of people in this world still need to see in order to believe, and that's perfectly normal and natural. And there are some people who are of a more scientific mindset, a more, you know, uh, physical, materialist mindset who need to see something. And what they need to see is us representing Christ for the rest of the world. People need to see Christ alive in us and the way we gather together, the way we speak of him, not just in private, you know, just whispering Jesus, you know, but we speak of him in public. The way we live our lives and we live our lives publicly as Christians, that's a way that the world can see us and see Christ. And we always have the proclamation that we have to give others. And that proclamation is, is that God is with us. The Lord has become incarnate. He has lived with us. He has suffered with us. He has died for us. And now he's risen and he's still very much alive and present to us. So today, as we uh, join our brother Thomas, and maybe we sometimes have doubts, sometimes we wish we could see Jesus, we wish we could see God, let us remember that we see God with more than the eyes of our bodies. We see the Lord with the eyes of our hearts, and we announce that vision to others so that they too may say, my Lord and my God. This time I invite Richard and his sponsor to come forward. Richard, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you with your sponsor and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the church's unity. I ask the whole community to join Richard as we recite our Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial through, with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic <coughs> apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and for the world to come. Amen. Richard, do you believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God? I do. Richard, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of this family. All powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your son from sin and gave him new life. Send your spirit upon him to be his helper and guide. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill him with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Richard, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, our, our brother Richard has already been united to Christ through baptism, and now with thanksgiving to God, we have received him into the full communion of the Catholic Church and confirmed him with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. As we rejoice in the reception of a new member of the Catholic Church, let us join with him in asking for the grace and mercy of our Savior. For Richard, whom we have welcomed today as one of us, that he may have the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit to persevere faithfully in the choice that he has made, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who believe in Christ and for the communities to which they belong, that they may come to perfect unity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church in which Richard was baptized and received his formation as a Christian, that it may always grow in knowledge of Christ and proclaim him more effectively, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in whom the spark of desire for God already burns, that they may be led to the fullness of truth in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who do not yet believe in Christ the Lord, that they may enter the way of salvation by the light of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all people, that they may be freed from hunger and war and live in peace and tranquility, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that as we have received the gift of faith, so too may we persevere in it to the end of our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for William Spafford and all who have died, that the souls of the faithful departed Rest eternally in the peace of God's mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, hear the prayers we offer that we may continue our loving service to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by the confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. <clears throat> Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also 
for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners Hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, <clears throat> Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. <clears throat> you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other now the sign of peace. Before our communion of the whole uh, assembly, uh, Deacon Jim and I will go up front and give first communion to our brother Richard, and then we'll come back up and get everything ready, and then we'll uh, have communion as usual. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, please be seated for a few announcements. Today um, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday and we will have exposition and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament at 2 p.m. right here in the church. And then we'll be praying the Chaplet of Divine Mercy at 3 p.m. Our very own sister, Linda Gopin, has been honored with the Mother of God Award by our Bishop John Noonan. Next Sunday at the 11 o'clock Mass, I will present her with this award on the occasion of her retirement. And she has, leaves behind a great legacy of service to the Diocese of Orlando for the last 30 years. And so we want to give her a good sending off as she heads back up to her beloved Pittsburgh. As Pittsburgh. We will have um, reception afterwards in EC1, so please join us. Um, the Knights of Columbus next meeting is Tuesday, April 9th at 7.30 p.m. in the Conference Center. All are welcome to attend. Come by and see the good work that the Knights do in our community. The Council of Catholic Women will have their meeting on Thursday, April 11th at 7 p.m. in the Conference Center. One of our diocesan seminarians, Sinclair, whose last name escapes me at this moment, will be giving his personal witness and vocation story, so be sure to come for this meeting. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul's meeting is on Monday at 7 p.m. in the Conference Center, uh, but they also are having their charity golf tournament on Saturday, April 20th, and, you know, last night we gave a blessing to one of our parishioners, Lou Beretta, who is 100 years old and still plays golf. He play, He shot a a 46 on nine holes the other day. And so in order for you to prepare yourself to, to golf until you're 100 years old, this is a good place to start at the, the, uh, the St. Vincent de Paul Charity Golf Tournament. It's also a good place to support the wonderful work that the St. Vincent de Paul Society does for those who are in need in our parish and even beyond our parish boundaries. So please, if you can play golf at all, which I can't, Please sign up for our tournament. You don't have to be a professional, just somebody who can swing a club. Be sure to support our youth group next Monday, April 15th at Texas Roadhouse in Oviedo. Come have a nice steak dinner. And this is from 4 to 9 p.m. Come have a nice steak dinner and some of the proceeds will go to our youth ministry. And we did this uh, back before Christmas, I think, and it was really successful. Texas Roadhouse is very generous with their, with their uh, help for us. So please come by and have a nice dinner. Our Paris Spring Fling is, event is right around the corner. Join us on Friday, April 19th from nine, 5 to 9 p.m. for an evening of all kinds of fun. We'll have food, drinks, bake sale, music, children's game, a petting zoo, complete with a miniature donkey, and more. So learn more or sign up to volunteer at the Burgundy table in our courtyard. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. <clears throat> May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, who by, by whose redeeming work you have been received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.